Thanks so much. I've got a challenging story to tell you because you all know how it ends. On June 26, three months ago today, in fact, the US Supreme Court ruled that same-sex couples have a constitutional right to marry. What you may not know, though, is that Stanford had a role in that case. I'm going to tell you about that effort, what it was like to be part of it as a student, and what it shows about the extraordinary things Stanford is doing with experiential learning. Our story begins with these folks, six gay and lesbian couples in Kentucky, who in 2013 sued their state to challenge its marriage ban. When the Supreme Court agreed to hear their case earlier this year, their lawyers wanted to add national experts to their litigation team. So they made two calls, first to the ACLU in New York, and second to Stanford. The reason they called us is that for the past 10 years, Stanford Law School has run something we call the Supreme Court Litigation Clinic. Each quarter, 12 students and three professors work full time for real clients with real cases before the court. We've got a really good track record, and we've worked for free. And as a result, over the past 10 years, we've been brought on as the lead counsel in 55 Supreme Court cases, which is about 7% of the total the court has heard during that time. And in 46 of those, a Stanford professor has stood up in court and delivered oral argument. On the same-sex marriage case, from the get-go, our side had two tasks. First, to write a brief advancing our own arguments. That's in, in blue. And second, to write a brief rebutting our opponent's arguments. That's in yellow. I joined the clinic two days after the state of Kentucky, our primary opponent, submitted its brief, submitted its brief in the case. So we had three weeks to craft our reply. So my team, five students and one professor, worked all day, every day, in a little conference room at the law school, reading old cases, uh, perusing our opponent's briefs, calling our co-counsel in Kentucky and New York to discuss strategy, and gradually crafting our arguments and writing the brief. And we all played a role. For me, there was one argument in particular that our opponents were making that I wanted to take on. It went like this. We as states get to decide what marriage is. And we've chosen a definition of marriage that is one man and one woman. So we're not barring gay couples from marrying. We're just saying that what they want isn't marriage. And that's not discrimination. Now, I'm gay and I value logic. So <laughs> this argument has driven me crazy for years. And I really wanted to find a quick and succinct way to take it on. So late one night in the library, I spent hours digging through old discriminatory laws from the states that were our opponents in the case, looking for an analog. And what I found was that in 1891, does anyone know what else happened in 1891? Stanford was founded, so it was a long time ago. Um, in 1891, the state of Kentucky wanted to ban women from voting. And the way that they did it was to, by law, define voter, the word voter, as a male citizen. So I sat down that night, and I wrote two paragraphs, anchored on that example, explaining that today, to say gay couples just aren't part of our definition of marriage makes about as much sense as saying women just aren't part of our definition of voting. And those two paragraphs, after many edits and revisions, made it into our brief and they went to the Supreme Court. And every other student on the team has a similar story. So that was writing the brief, but it didn't end there. The day we sent the brief to the printer, Stanford flew 10 of our clients and six of our co-counsel, shown here, to campus for a full day of meetings and events with students. My favorite event that day was at lunch, where students from across the university came to hear from our clients their stories, so what it was like to be gay in Kentucky 20, 30, and 40 years ago, and what it had meant to them to be part of this seminal litigation. It remains the only event I've been to at Stanford where half the room was in tears by the end. The five of us students on the team also flew here to DC to be here while the oral advocates on our side prepared for argument at the court. Over four days, we visited the Supreme Court. We actually saw an argument by another Stanford professor that day. We went to Howard and Georgetown, where our side was hosting moots, practice oral arguments. And just a few blocks from here, we sat in on closed door strategy sessions, 
where oral advocates discussed and reshaped their answers to questions with the rest of the lawyers on our side. And what that meant was that the following week, when we were back on campus, listening to oral arguments the day they came out in a sunny little classroom, we had not only heard our side's lawyers practicing their answers to questions they were now getting from the justices, we'd also met the people they were talking about and helped craft the arguments that they were drawing from in court. And as a result, I'll always remember that two and a half hours because for the first time in my life, I both felt like I truly understood a major national legal issue and that I had helped make a difference in changing it. Now this was a unique experience, but the remarkable thing about Stanford is just how many of my classmates are having unique experiences of their own. These are Stanford's clinical legal offices, and in them there are 10 other clinics, each with their own distinct focus, ranging from religious liberty to environmental protection. In all of them, students work full-time for a quarter under some of the best lawyers in the country. And in all of them, my classmates have had experiences that have defined their educations at Stanford. For my friend Amy, it was negotiating with a real estate company to prevent an elderly woman from being evicted from her apartment in East Palo Alto. For my friends Taylor and Ashley, it was standing up in court, leading a criminal trial in which they successfully exonerated a criminal defendant in San Mateo. And of course, this all has a downside, which is we as students get spoiled. For me, it's gonna be a very long time, if ever, before I get to work on a case this interesting again. But in the meantime, what I learned at Stanford will stick with me. Every time I write a brief, I'm gonna draw on skills I learned working with our co-counsel. Every time I witness legal injustice, I'm going to see our clients in my mind's eye. And that's just about the best education I can imagine. Thank you.